bring in or sort of modify, like low cost meters, etc., in the field of smart grids? So the question is around smart grids, keep it relevant to the whole audience. I won't go into too much detail. But I'll use it as an example. <coughs> Nothing about the grid has changed in the last 50 years other than some level of additional monitoring. There's no new tools. The grid is built in a rigid way that was not and it's not designed for the way it's being used today. In the old days, there were five power plants and 50 million customers. Today, anybody who puts a solar panel in his roof is a generator. Every wind turbine is a generator. So you get thousands of generators, not five, and you get thousands of consumers with very variable loads. Nobody has said, how do we rethink the grid in that environment? When I see something like that, I think of it as uh, opportunity-rich space. I know nothing about the grid, but I ask a simple question. All of us probably know what a transformer is. Convert one voltage to another, and the voltage conversion is ratio to wire, copper windings around an iron core, and that becomes your transformer. Now, that hasn't changed since the 1800s. So I called one guy and I said, how can we change that? How can we reinvent the transform? Because today there's so many sources, there's so many perturbations. You know, every time a cloud goes overhead, your solar panel sends a spike of power through the grid. And the grid has this bad characteristic that any given millisecond, the total power generated has to match the total power consumed. It has to be balanced. Now, most systems we design have buffers. Queues where if you have excess power, it gets stored. If you need excess power, it comes out of storage. Uh, even your car, which you drive, the two wheels aren't, connect, aren't connected directly. They're connected through a differential in the middle. So if one wheel goes over a rut in the road, the two wheels can spin at different speeds. The entire national grid, whether it's here in the US, is designed differently. When I see something like that, I see opportunity. So I said, can we do an electronic transform that takes power in and takes give power out, but can give power out differently if three phases of the grid of a power grid are unbalanced, so somebody's taking more load from one phase than another, you inject different amounts of power. If somebody has more inductive load, like a refrigerator come on or something, you change the inductance. You inject what's called walk uh, or reactance into the grid. Without getting into technical, we have a company called Veritech doing that. <coughs> then I said, if the grid has to be balanced, then you have to have storage in the grid. If you use batteries, they're too expensive. What do you do? So we have a project that's storing electric power in compressed air. Now people told me we are totally crazy to attempt this. This is one of our clean tech efforts. Huh? Now people say, how can you store electric power in compressed air? What are you doing it? I'm doing it with a very hard engine technology for uh, near isothermal engines. So when you know, in a normal engine, the engine gets very hot. That's a source of inefficiency in a grid. We said if you keep the temperature difference between compression cycle and expansion cycle to 10 degrees, you can get to the same efficiency as a lead acid gas. So we're trying it. Now whether we fail or succeed doesn't matter. But if we succeed, it completely changes every grid everywhere in the world, cost effective. So it's worth trying. Uh, my general point is, the point I made earlier, no matter which area you live, and whenever I ask people, what is the innovation in the grid, they say, oh, not, not a lot. It is absolutely possible. So we have a company called Veritech that has built this very low-cost war insertion device. Uh, very, very applicable to developing countries. 
More importantly, it doesn't need this big substation or 10 foot high devices. It's a small thing that can be mounted on any electricity pole and it locally manages the voltage on that pole. So if the wire is coming to your house from the pole, it manages the voltage and reactants to your house. Uh, if you change your load, if your motor just switches on in your washing machine, then it injects a counterbalancing reactants in there. So every area is open to innovation, and that's the whole I hope I give off all of you. So I mean, people say, well, I'm in agriculture, there's not much innovation there. There is. If you're in medicine, yes, there's opportunity there. If you're building new materials, in even reinventing how steel is made. We're working on it. People say, well, in steel, there's no innovation. I repeat, if you tell me an area, I suspect there's something innovative we are doing in it, so please be open. 